freedom of speech is once again under attack. And this time, the target is Pavel Durov, the CEO and founder of the encrypted messaging app Telegram. Durov, who launched Telegram with his brother in 2013, now has around 950 million users worldwide. Many saw the platform as a way to discuss dissent views on many issues, and it's currently the most popular social app in Russia and Ukraine during the war. This comes as a shock that he was arrested in a Western country rather than a dictatorship. On August 24, Durov was apprehended in Le Bourget, France, while traveling from Azerbaijan, and the, the arrest was carried out by Ofmin, the Central Office for the Prevention of Violence Against Minors, which was established in 2022 by the French Ministry of the Interior and operates internationally. This situation brings to mind back to Canada with the Liberals' new upcoming Bill C-63, the controversial censorship law proposed by Trudeau, which was ostensibly designated to protect vulnerable children online, but has a heavy potential to suppress dissenting opinions deemed unacceptable by the Liberals. This interview was conducted on Monday, the same day the Paris Judicial Tribunal issued a statement on the charges. Telegram CEO Pavel Durov has been released and referred to an investigative judge after a four-day interrogation by French police and now has been charged over alleged criminal activity on application. He is now on conditional bail of 5 million euros and cannot leave France. However, Macron denies it is a political decision. In response, Elon Musk tweeted free Pavel, emphasizing the importance of defending freedom of speech. The globalist leader of France rebutted concerns and so-called false information with an X post after global outrage of the arrest by saying the nation is, and I quote, more than anything attached to freedom of expression and communication, to innovation and to spirits of enterprise. It will remain so, end of quote. I wanted to speak with Viva Fry, a former litigation lawyer turned popular YouTuber, to discuss these new developments. The 30,000 foot overview of what happened to Pavel Durov is that he is the founder of Telegram. He founded another social media company beforehand, which they colloquially called the Russian Facebook. He fled Russia because the Russian government was asking him to censor DK, sold his interest in the company, said, I'm not censoring anything, moved to the United Arab Emirates after shopping around places and started Telegram, an encrypted messaging app. And as he's uh, either en route or going to spend a night in Paris on his way back to United Arab Emirates, the French government picks him up and arrests him. And Macron is um, suggesting that uh, France respects the rule of law and respects freedom of expression and that uh, he leaves it to the judiciary uh, to dole out justice to Pavel. But um, a, a man who literally fled Russia for fear of getting arrested uh, and now has just gotten picked up and nabbed at an airport in Paris by the ever peace-loving and tolerant French regime. However, Pavel de Rome is mentioning following the law under the EU and also is saying that he is working with the authority at a certain extent when it comes to criminal activity. But they are going after him anyway. Well, first of all, it's like you can't cooperate with people who want you in jail. You can only give them the opportunity to jail you. I have no doubt that he is not allowing knowingly or deliberately or allowing backdoors you know, they have methods, but when you have what, uh, I think they said they were up to 900 million users, stuff will slip under the radar, slip in, sneak in, and then you have to go and play whack-a-mole. Uh, it's no different than, than anything that happens on Facebook, Twitter, or uh, YouTube. So, some, some forms are much easier to navigate than others, but it's also the nature of encrypted uh, apps. People will always be able to find a way to use things for illegal purposes. They have a bilateral extradition agreement between the UAE and France, which includes things like drug trafficking and internet crime. If they had a, a solid case against Pavel Durov, they would have issued the warrant, 
let the world know what the charges are, what the evidence is, and then asked UAE to respect their bilateral um, extradition treaty, which they didn't do. The, the government doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. When you have the government of Brazil threatening to arrest Twitter employees for not censoring accounts, when you have France, in addition to saying, you know, we better censor social media because of the riot stuff, and then also demanding that Rumble censor accounts, and when they don't, Rumble has to pull out, they don't get the benefit of the doubt. They actually get the cynicism that they deserve. But what can be, this is pure speculation, but what uh, Pavel Duro can face as consequences if they find him guilty of what they are talking about right now. They, we know that they say he faces up to 20 years in prison. No doubt that there's bad content on Telegram. Um, I mean, in fact, one of the reasons, the only reason that I ever opened up an account was because uh, it was the only place where you could get information about what was going on in Israel after October 7th. Uh, you could get some of that on Twitter as well. But I, I have no doubt that there's highly offensive content on Telegram. The only question is, is there illegal content? And in as much as there is, the question then becomes, is Pavel not implementing proper protocol or proper filters to go after and take it down once it's there? We know that this has been a problem on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter. And so, you know, they, they've never gone after Facebook, despite known issues of revenge porn, a child exploitation material on Facebook. There were issues like this on Twitter before Elon took over, and he did a pretty good job of going after it. I have no doubt that uh, Pavel implemented proper measures. That's, they're never going to be fail-safe and they're never going to be foolproof. And if, the, if the, the tactic here is to find the examples of what slips through the cracks so you can then arrest the guy who doesn't cooperate with governments asking for backdoor access to the information on his platform, we've got a big problem. And, and so everybody appreciates. If you haven't seen the interview with Pavel and Tucker from a month ago, he was specifically talking about how when he came to the States, the FBI was trying to buy his programmer so that he can get backdoor access to the data on... Uh, Telegram. We get too much attention from you know, the, the FBI, the security agencies, wherever we came to the US. So to give you an example, last time I was in, in the US, I brought uh, an engineer that is working for Telegram, and there was an attempt to secretly hire my engineer behind my back by cyber security officers or agents, uh, wherever they are called. The US government should hire your engineer? That's my understanding. That's what he told me. To write code for them or to break into Telegram? They were curious to learn which open source libraries are integrated to the Telegram's app you know, on the client side. And they were trying to persuade him to use certain open source tools that he would then integrate into the Telegram's code that, in my understanding, would serve as backdoors. Does that make you paranoid that you'll be penetrated? I mean, I, I assume governments would like to know what's going on sort of privately on Telegram. Well, there's definitely a lot of responsibility that we have on our shoulders. And we, I wouldn't say we are paranoid, but I think it makes sense to stay prudent and uh, you know, not being... Uh, too accessible, not traveling to weird places. You don't travel to weird places? I hope not. Uh, like I travel to places where I have uh, confidence that you know, it, those places are uh, consistent with what we do and our values. I don't go to any of the big geopolitical powers of the countries like China or Russia or yes. even the US. If he ever been found guilty, what that mean for the future of free speech? It, it depends. Guilty of what? Based on what evidence? If he's partaking in human trafficking or, you know, facilitating uh, child exploitation videos, if, he's part, if, there's, if it's bona fide criminal activity or negligence or criminal negligence, I, I'm not here to defend the guilty. Uh, but the problem is, what we know is that they've been going after all social media companies, abusing of the justification of criminal activity to censor legitimate, lawful free speech. We're, we're, we're in England right now where they're trying to, they're accessing social media to lock people up for mean social media posts, uh, some of which I believe are factually accurate statements, you know, like the, the government favoring illegal immigrants or illegal aliens in the UK to the detriment of the local population. 
we know, I mean, Keir Starmer comes out and says, you know, now we're going to start shipping illegals around the country and they're going to get housing priority over British nationals. Uh, we know they're doing it. We know that they've been trying to shut down these platforms and, and raising hogwash pretextual criminality like in Brazil, like in France against Twitter. But they are they are abusing of the the January 6th type excuse to go after these platforms. And so it's some, you know, uh, if Pavel is bona fide guilty of anything, fine. But you've arrested a highly political figure at a time where the governments have been flexing their strong arms, trying to shut down Elon for having his space with, with Trump, trying to shut down Elon in Brazil, rumble in Brazil, rumble in France. They don't get the benefit of the doubt, and they haven't showed us that they have a legitimate reason to do what they've done. It, this is part and parcel of the attempt to stifle the free exchange of ideas on the internet. Misinformation and disinformation uh, is also known as being wrong or lying. You cannot outlaw lying, period. And anybody who thinks that you get to criminalize speech because it's misinformation or disinformation, you are a filthy fascist tyrant like Keir Starmer out of the UK. You, you cannot do that. People are allowed to lie, unfortunately. And then you use the free internet to show them as the liars they are. The problem is not that the government wants only the truth to be told. They want to be the only ones that can lie and that they cannot have their lies fact-checked in real time. And that's why they're going after these platforms. And obviously Telegram and Pavel was getting in the way of that. And so they've come down with their, 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 their hammer now. But France wants control over the narrative. France wants control over information. That's how you exercise full control over the people. So the fact that he has an enemy as a common enemy, they still have the exact same interest at hand or at, at heart. And that is control the internet. They want to shut down X they, you know, and, and in, in America. They, they went after Twitter to get Donald Trump's private DMs circumventing federal law, the National Archives Records Act. And they went and issued a warrant on Twitter to produce Donald Trump's private DMs on Twitter while he was still president. Executive privilege would apply. They, they prohibited Twitter from even notifying Trump because they didn't want him knowing him. If they don't have this type of cooperation, much in the way they no longer did once Elon took over the platform, and much in the way they never did, I guess, with Telegram, they're, they're dirty, rotten scoundrels who will abuse of every power that they have, flex their regulatory arm to shut people down, shut people up, or shut them in jail. Censorship is under attack worldwide, and you can see it yourself. And in Canada, Ruben News is one of the last media who don't receive money from the government, who is 100% independent. If you want to make sure we keep the light on and we continue to bring you the other side of the story, we need your help. So I invite you to go over stopthecensorship.ca. On this website, not only you can sign the petition to try to stop the censorship that is happening, but also you can donate to make sure we continue to exist and to report the other side of the story for you guys. Thank you in advance.